Week 14 in Tinseltown. Welcome in to week 14 of the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music. It is the Alamo City Artillery taking on the Los Angeles Lycans. Welcome into the broadcast booth, everybody. It is Chris Curtis along with Mickey Melillo in the broadcast booth with me. And Mickey, Alamo City has one shot, one opportunity to help themselves a loss and they're out a win and some help and they're into the SFL playoff picture. Oh, absolutely, Chris. Right now, they definitely need this win right here. It's going to be a tough win to get that they're on the road, but the Lycans have been struggling all season long, coming into this game 2-9. and nine. Uh, What the Lycans need to do if they want to win this game and not be last in their division, they got to be able to contain Ace Fennec. He is top 10 in every QB stat there is. But on the other side of the token, their offensive line hasn't been doing their job. They are last in giving up stats. So if the Lycans want to win, they've got to get the Ace Fennec. Well, see if they can do just that Ace Fennec. The, the passing attack for Alamo City has not been in question. It's been good most of the season. Their running attack has been the main question mark as we get things underway. LA is going to get this ball first, so we'll see Sully Richardson and their offense to get things started. Week 14, game three is underway from LA. This is back into the end zone. Knee is taken, and we have our first drive of the game on the horizon as Darius Iniguez will knee it down. Yeah, looking forward to this game. I want to see if Alamo City can pull off this win, especially on the road in L.A. here. See what L.A. brings to the table. We'll go through their offense here in just a little bit. Bunch right formation for Sully Richardson. First and 10. That is going to be a stiff arm to the, from the running back. That's Logan Jack who gets a few yards, make it a seven-yard gain. He's the main halfback. Brandon Brennanstall, your secondary halfback for the Lycans. Jalen Wells will be the fullback. And then Bubba Tree, Darius Iniguez, LZ Pryor, and then the number one receiver, Chris Lee, is in the Lycan blue. That's going to be your quartet. And then Tommy Rahman, Jack Flash, your tight ends for the Lycans offense to so get to the defense here for Alamo City in just a little bit. Heavy set formation, second and three. Toss play left side chance for Brennan Stahl, and he's going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage. They'll say he gained a yard. Not much to that taken down by Rain Rie, the free safety. Yeah, great job there by Rain Rie. Just coming in from the free safety spot, stopping the running back right at the line of scrimmage. Giving the refs gave him a yard, but just a great job to make this second, uh, third and short. Big third down for momentum. This will be a handoff to Jalen Wells through the middle, and he gets the first down. That is ideal for the Lycans. Get the run game going. Nothing Alamo City can do there. A great job by Jalen Wells there. Fullback, the big guy. He, they're usually used just for those short yardage situations to get these first downs, and he did that there for the Lycans. Great work against an Alamo City defense that's pretty stingy as far as rush yards. 89 per game given up. That's good for seventh in the SFL. Two to the left, one to the right for the Lycans. Sully is under center in the offset eye. Looking to throw it. Gets out of the pocket. Pressure comes. Throw. One-handed grab. That was close. And it is a grab for Iniguez. Second and one for nine yards. Oh, what a grab by Iniguez. Just coming across the middle. Coming across on that post route. Sticking out his paw. Being able to, pick, to bring in that ball for a nine-yard gain on first down. Great catch there by the wide receiver. Makes second down a whole lot easier. Heavy set look. Receiver just close to the line of scrimmage. This will be a handoff for Wells through the middle and did not get it. Third and one got a little bit closer, but not close enough. And it'll be a third down coming up. Great job by Rob Foraker right there from the outside linebacker spot. Doing his job, keeping an eye on the running back. Being able to make this third and one and a chance if they could stop the play here to get the ball back here in the first down without giving up any points. Sully's throwing the ball one time, 12 touchdowns, 20 interceptions. Would like to improve on that, if at all possible. This will be a handoff. Logan Jack through the left side, and that's a first down for the Lycans. First and 10 past midfield. Good-looking drive so far for L.A. Oh, great job by Logan Jack. Just going around the outside of the tackle, putting a stiff arm there on the aforementioned Rob Foraker, being able to pick up a lot of yards there to make this first and 10 from the 49 on the other side of the field. 
See what they can do. Bunch left. Sully in a position against the dime. Looking man-to-man -man on the outside. Blitz coming. It's taken care of. Brennan Stahl is going to get this toss play. Gets the stiff arm past one, past two, and then steps out of bounds. First down and more down inside the 40-yard line. And Brennan Stahl looking good, number 23 in blue. I'm starting to like this one-two combination with Jack and Brennan Stahl by the Likens. Just trading them in and out. If Logan Jack can't pick up the first down, give it to Brennan Stahl. He'll be able to pick it up. And if he can't, you've got that fullback in Jalen Wells to be able to just bust through the line and be able to pick up the one or two yards that you will need on third down. Yeah, it's been good so far. Good so far for sure. Something to look forward to for the future in L.A. as long as they can keep everybody intact. Offset eye look. Handoff through the right side. That's Jack Stiff Arm and Moore out to the 30. Out toward the sideline to the 25. Out to the 20 to the 17-yard line. And he gets taken out of bounds there. Logan Jack with a real good run. And it's an L.A. trip inside the red zone. Oh, what a stiff arm there by Logan Jack. It looked like it might have been a tackle for loss there. But Logan Jack just places stiff arm there on the defender and just sees his blockers. Been able to just find a seam on the sideline. Pick up all those yards to get to the 17 yard line they're in striking distance of the end zone now looking real good at the moment see if la can get their first drive into the end zone put alamo city on their back foot again alamo city needs to win to keep their slim playoff hopes alive tulsa losing in the first block of games does help them out quite a bit that's going to be through the middle it is brennan stall getting nine more yards and the rushing attack has been the main feature so far for la on this first drive and you've got to give credit to the Lycans offensive line. They created a huge hole there for Brennan Stoll to be able to pick up nine yards in that first down. Second and one. And off. Left side. That is Jack trying to push his way through. Breaks through. The physical game is good. And he is into the end zone for an L.A. touchdown. Logan Jack finds a way to get home, and L.A. strikes first on home turf. Oh, Logan Jack right there just busting through two, three defenders there on it. He looked like he was going to get stopped there at the three-yard line, but he said, nope, I'm keeping my legs moving. I'm going to get through all this, getting a little help there from one of his receivers for a block, getting into the end zone for six points to start this game. Great work from L.A. to cap off a fantastic-looking drive to start things out for them. Extra point is ready to go, and that is up and through. No issue there as Zestio Black will put it through. So now Alamo City gets their turn to try to counter a 10-play, 78-yard drive from L.A. And that was just a great way to start this game on their home turf. Really not a great season for them, but just a great way to start this game for them to cap off this season 22 of the SFL. Good stuff so far. This will be up in the air returnable just inside the end zone. And it's going to be a good return out to the 24-yard line. They'll save the 23. And that is Yeo Montana who brings that up, gets taken down there. And we'll see the Alamo City offense led by Ace Fennick and Brad Jones Rainstorm, your halfback combination. No fullback on the roster contracted. And then there is uh, Kenny Hendricks, Ziggy Ronick, Yeo Montana, and Vin Calia, your quartet of wide receivers. Garrison Blue had the game winning touchdown against Louisiana a couple weeks ago. And then Hank Earl Troll is the, are the tight end tandem for the artillery. Chance for Fennick. Is going to be putting it off to the flats. That's a first down and one more out to the sideline. That is good work from Brad Jones, your main halfback. And that's what the Lycans have to look out for. Ace Finnick, he may not have to throw down the field. He just has to throw a check down pass to his running back. And Brad Jones did a great job just finding a seam right there on the sideline, being able to go up and pick up a first down on the first play of the game. Good start for Fennec. He's uh, coming in just under 63% completion percentage, which, again, is one of those categories he is in the top 10 of in the SFL. First and 10, motion man. That's Montana moving into the slot on the left of the formation. Handoff through the middle. Not much in the way of room for Rainstorm to work his way through, but he does get a couple, make it second and seven. 
brainstorm there. Just didn't have anything being done by their offensive line. This offensive line, they're not doing much in the sense of blocking. I mentioned it before. They are last in the league in getting defenders to Ace Finnick when he goes back to pass. Finnick is under center here. Second and seven, another handoff. This one for Brad Jones, and he's going to get taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Loses a yard in the process. That is a decent tackle for Greg Ward, the outside linebacker. And it's going to be a big play for the Lycans here. Like I said, Ace Finnick is, is last in the league with sacks against. Let's see if the Lycans get into the backfield and stop them here on their first drive with a three and out. L.A. is trying to keep the momentum. That's a play action. Fennec backs it up on third down, throws, and that is caught. That's out to the 45-yard line in Lycan territory. What a dime over the middle to Vincalia. Oh, great job by Ace Finnick right there with the play action. Just turning around, faking it to the running back and rolling out to the right-hand side, then throwing the ball across the field, finding Vincalia right before he gets hit by the defenders. That's a great job by Finnick and a great play call by the art artillery coaching staff. Looked like it wasn't a traditional post route by Kalia either. He had to adjust that route mid-form to try to get across the field and give Fennec a target. Split backs look. This will be a handoff on first down. Gets a couple of yards out to the 43-yard line, and that is a handoff for Brad Jones. But Ryan Yosef, the strong safety, that could be a problem for L.A., one of the key contributors of this L.A. defense. Oh, absolutely, especially with Ace Fennec being a top-10 quarterback in the league right now. Ryan Yosef, I mean, he's their strong safety. He's one of their main, like you said, one of the main contributors in his defense. This is going to be a tough blow to the Lycans defense. Hopefully he comes back in a reasonable amount of time here after just being maybe a stinger on the sideline. First, second and seven. Fennec is under center against the 4-3. Still outside of field goal range at this point, trying to answer an awesome drive from LA's offense to start things out. Handoff through the middle, not going to happen. That is a big hit. Rainstorm goes nowhere. Actually, Brad Jones able to get two carries in a row. Third and eight coming up here for Alamo City. And great job at the Lycans defense. Tazzy Blackwell there on the tackle. They were showing blitz, but they were showing blitz on the outside linebacker. And then Tazzy Blackwell just stayed back, keeping an eye on the running back to be able to fill that hole so he couldn't pick up anything. That's a play action. Fennec backs it up. Looks, throws again, left side, that one's picked off, back the other way, huge takeaway for L.A., who came in in the bottom third of turnover differential. Monte Wyatt clearly didn't get the memo, and he gets the interception to give L.A. back the football. Oh, Monte Wyatt there in a free safety position, just doing what he does, just sitting back, watching the quarterback's eyes, and what he did is, as you see here, he just jumped that route, knowing the ball was being passed, intercepted that ball, and just bringing it back. Not a big return there, but just a great momentum boost for the Lycans here on home field. First and 10 for the Lycans as they get this ball back and have full control of the momentum in this game. 7-0 lead, 3.48 in the first quarter. Offset single back for Sully. Looks like Alamo City may send some extra help. Try to get to the quarterback. They'll bunch everybody up on the right side of the formation. Sully backs it up, has the football. Pressure coming, throws over the middle. That's going to be a right side anyway. That one's caught at the 50-yard line. Chris Lee, the clear number one on this L.A. offense, first and 10. And great job by Sully Richardson there. He knew he had pe pressure, but he stayed in the pocket, found Lee, just being able to gr find that pass, find the open receiver, and really throwing the ball to the only spot that, he, that his receiver could catch it, being able to pick up a first down at midfield. Man, if Lee is able to actually complete that spin move there, he had the instincts to try to pull a move off. If he makes that, he is gone, and that's your touchdown of the season. I formation. Two to the left, one to the right. First and 10 for L.A. after the big completion downfield at the 50-yard line. Looking to hand this off. That's going to be through the middle to Brennan Stahl. He's going to have a few yards and make it a second and six for L.A. And Brennan Stahl right there again. Four yards right there. If he keeps on picking up four yards every time that uh, Logan Jack is just off the field. This is going to be a great job at the Lycans offense, just picking up, even if it's just methodical like that, being able to pick up first downs every third down. 
That's going to be through the middle again, and another one that got close to the first down marker. Jalen Wells, the fullback, gets it to third and in inches, but can't get it over the line. It looked a little close there, Chris, but got to go with the referee's eyes there. But third and in inches, definitely makeable with the Lycans, the way their offense has been going all night so far. Heavy set look, eye formation, third and in inches. See what L.A. draws up here. This will be a Jalen Wells run. Through the middle, got the first down. Gashing the Alamo City rushing defense so far in this first quarter are the L.A. Lycans. If you're new to the Simulation Football League, welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sidelines and start your player today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Click the Join the Community button and begin your career or just to meet the stars, the SFL on and off the field. It's never too late to get involved. Yeah, that's right. Even in week 14, it's not too late to get involved. That is Chris Lee coming across the formation. Moving everybody to the left side. First and 10 for Sully and company. This will be a handoff misdirection run play, and it is not going to go very far as Logan Jack is taken down behind the line of scrimmage, second and 12. And great job. Mickey McGuire coming in, cornerback position. Being able to get the tackle for loss there just to make sure that the Lycans have a tough job here on second and 12. Yes, they do. Sully backs up with an empty backfield. Throws short, bit of a short, shallow cross, and that is going to end up getting them six yards. Actually, it ended up getting them eight yards because they lost two previously. Chris Lee has it third and four. That'll make it manageable. And that was a great pass there by Sully Richardson. You had Ron Hoff and Bo Martin Jr. right there on the tackle, just over the middle of the defense, but just a great job finding the open receiver again for a third and short here. Here we go. Can Alamo City hold them to three potentially? This will be a throw and a big time sack. The blitz gets home and Alamo City forces the fourth down. Robert bringing the thump on the defensive end spot. Uh oh, Chris, you just took the words right out of my mouth. That was a thump for the ages right there. Robert Thump oh. coming in. Oh, what a huge hit right there. I hope Sully Richardson is okay, but just a perfect time sack by the artillery's defense. And now they're getting the ball back without having to give up any points. Yeah, that's a big time sack to take them out of field goal range. Punt's going to go towards the right sideline and it will head out of bounds about the, I'd say, the 17 yard line. First and 10 for Alamo City. They give up no points off the turnover, which is clutch for their defense. First and 10 for the artillery. Uh, and again, I just can't say anything. Robert Thumb just coming in clutch right there, making sure they could stay, keep this a one-score game. The 18 is where they marked it when it went out of bounds against the nickel look. It is going to be Ace Fennec this time. And off through the middle, and that is a nice run forward for Brad Jones. Make it a five-yard gain. That's pretty good. First and 10 goes to second and five, and that'll probably be the last play of the first quarter. And just a great job there by Brad Jones, like you said, Chris. It looked like he was going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Just a few little juke moves and everything. He was able to pick up five yards on first down. See if they get this off before the end of the first quarter. They may. Seven seconds left, and they will. Fennec looking to throw it. Throws short. Has enough for the first down on the short, shallow cross. And that is going to end the first quarter in style for the Alamo City Artillery. Hank Girl Troll on the catch. That's the end of the first frame. It's a 7 nothing lead. Likens up on top in the at the end of the first. Back inside the broadcast booth, Chris Curtis, Mickey Millillo along with you, Michaela Foraker, and it is uh, Zach Holdorf on stats, and along with Cameron Irvine, your commissioner and producer on the buttons tonight. Underway in the second frame, Alamo City's second possession of this one. And the offset eye from their own 30-yard line. Going to roll it out. Fennec throws hot over the middle. That one's caught. I believe that was a one-handed grab at the 50-yard line and then being dragged across. That is another Vin Calia sighting, his second catch of the ball game. Oh, Vin Calia. What a great catch by him. Looks like he's on a post route there and just sticks out his hand. He's able to pick up the ball. Now he's, they're on the like inside the field at the 46-yard line, but... Vin Calia, just a great catch right there to pick up the first down. That was a seed over the middle as well from Fennec. I mean, at that point, Calia had, can't help but catch that football as long as he puts his hand out. 
This will be a Fennec throw again. Another hot one over the middle. That one is caught. Crossing pattern on the post route is going to find. That one is Montana. First and 10, 19, then 18 on this drive. And two passes later, they're well within LA range. Absolutely, Chris. And this is the ace Finnick we've known to see all season long. Being able to roll out, finding his receivers. Yale Montana right there on the post route and just over the middle of the field, being able to catch the ball, knowing that he had two, three defenders around him, but still have the wherewithal to run up the field to pick up those extra two to three yards. Finnick under center. One interception so far today. Came in sixth best QB rating in the league. And that's going to be a run through the left side. Not much to it. And it'll be a two-yard gain, second and eight. And not much for Brad Jones there. The uh, artillery line there just didn't give him a hole to run through. But again, when you've got eighth Finnick as your head of your offense, be on the lookout for the passing plays. Under center. Second and eight, looking to throw this. This is going to be a great pass left side out to the 12-yard line. Alamo City really cooking up something as Calia has another dot. And Calia is being Ace Phoenix's main receiver for this game. That's, or, that's only his third catch, but that's another first down for Calia there, picking up, getting, getting hit pretty hard there by the defense. Already has 55 yards receiving on this game, and we're only at the beginning of the second quarter. Pretty good so far. It's about 18 yards per catch. First and 10. It does be a toss play left side. Great spin move, and he's in. Brad Jones with the spin to the inside. Clears a lane. Touchdown, Alamo City. Oh, Brad Jones, you should be my new washing machine with that spin cycle. You <laughs> turned around. You found that hole. And uh, right off tackle, just saw the defender coming in, and he, he had nothing but green till he saw the oh. blue in the end zone. Touchdown, Brad Jones. Great play there. Great move. Uh, that's that's <laughs> terrible. That's just awful. You should uh, be ashamed of yourself, and I'm here for it. <laughs> Trying to tie up the ball game. That is Matt Fennick putting it up and through. For the extra point. 8-12 and Mickey, or I'm sorry, 8-12 left in the second quarter. Mickey's getting a new washing machine and we're tied up at 7. Oh, Chris, be ready for it because this is that's going to be me for the entire broadcast tonight. That's good. That's good. Can't have one person making terrible jad jokes. It has to be both of us. That'll be up and gone. Kick is on the way downfield. Returnable from just inside the end zone. Out to the 20. Oh, he fumbled the football. Diving on top of it to save the possession is going to be the offensive tackle. And that is a heck of a way to start this drive. LA really trying to throw away this momentum here on their second possession. Oh, yeah. Willie Bands coming in, just placing a big hit, forcing the fumble there. If it wasn't for Jimmy Kennedy for the Lycans being in the right place at the right time. This would have been Alamo City's ball in the red zone after that great running play by Brad Jones. Well, now we have LA with the football at the very least, and that'll change things up. Under center from the 20 yard line. Looks like they're gonna send a blitz. Sully tosses out to the left. That's a first down and more. Good work, Logan Jack on his first carry of the drive. First and 10 for the Lycans. A great job by Logan Jack, just getting around the tackle there, putting a stiff arm exactly when he needed to. And as you can see, just picking up a few extra yards, picking up first down. They were on the 20, and now they're on the 33 and 32, excuse me, and just keep on driving the ball like the Lycans have done already this first half. Sully is under center, needs to avoid Robert Thump, who laid a beating on him in the first uh, or in the last drive they had. It's like Alamo City is pretty content sending the blitz and another big tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Brennan Stahl's taken down hard, second and 13. Alamo City's defense playing real hard, trying to preserve any possible chance they have to get into the playoffs. Oh, absolutely right, Chris. They're, they're, their playoff hopes are on the line for this game, and everybody's playing at the highest level right now to make sure they can at least be in the talking points for the scenario so, show tomorrow night. Second and 13 for L.A. Against the nickel defense. Looks like they're playing a little bit of man on the outsides. 
They do send some extra help again. That's a throw on the run. <laughs> oh, Sully is baited into a throw on the run, and Alamo City turns them over one more time, and the Lycans faithful not happy with how that has developed, and a big opportunity for the artillery to take the lead. Oh, bogey bar right there at the start of the play. Moved up to the line of scrimmage to really play press defense there. And that was the right move by the artillery. Because if he wasn't in that press defense and he was playing a little further back, he wouldn't have been in the position to intercept that ball. But bogey bar right there, catching ball, interception. Now the artillery are on the other side of the field going for their second score of the game. Yes, in, in what is basically a playoff game for the artillery, they need playmakers to step up and make plays. Bogey has done just that. That is going to be a one-yard loss. 7-7 seven, seven game it remains. Big tackle behind the line of scrimmage is going to set them up with a second and 11. Oh, Brogan Spiro there, right? There. Yep. Just coming in off the defensive end position. Just a great job reading the play, getting the tackle for loss. Two to the right, one to the left. Fennec is under center. He's got two in the backfield behind him. He'll back it up. Five-step drop, plenty of time. Throws hard over the pocket, and it's incomplete. Big hit, great timing from the safety to come up and make the hit happen. That's actually the corner, Mike Scott. Oh, Mike Scott, you're absolutely right there, Chris. Just came up at the perfect time to be able to knock the ball loose from the receiver to make sure that they couldn't pick up the first down. That was a great pass by Ace Fennec, but even a better play by Mike Scott. Here we go. Three to the right, one to the left, third and 11. Alamo City not trying to let this opportunity go to waste. This will be a play action. Fennec has time, thrown over the middle. That one's caught out inside the 30-yard line, close to the 25. It's Yayo Montana. Oh, just a great play by there. Even fooled the cameraman there, if you saw, Chris. Just that play action was fantastic. Ace Fennec having plenty of time, finding his receiver. I believe that was Vin Calia was over Calia, the middle. Yeah. 19, not 18. That's Kalia in his office over the middle of the field between the hash marks where he's been most of the day. First and 10 for Alamo City inside or nearly near the red zone, not quite inside of it. From the 25. Six and 09 left in this first in this first half anyway. First and 10, backing up. Thrown on a short pass. It's a three-yard gainer. Not much to it. Calia with another reception and a second and seven as things start to slow down a little bit. And Vin Calia, definitely the favorite target for Ace Finnick tonight. Just coming up clutch here, he's five receptions on six targets, averaging 15 yards per reception so far. Second and seven. Backing up. Finnick has time. Throws right side. That's caught out to the two-yard line to the one, and he's stopped there. Calia at the one, maybe two-yard line, has him first and goal. And I just said it, it's Ace Finnick's favorite target. Finn Kalia right there on a post route coming across and just getting a couple of steps on that receiver, but he, uh, excuse me, the defender, but just a great job by the defender to go for the diving tackle. First and goal from the one yard line. As you see, almost 100 yards receiving in the first half here. He's been dynamite, no doubt. That corner route was made for him. First and goal. Hand off through the middle. Can't get there. Not going to happen. Taken down hard as Rainstorm can't get the, the plane. Second and goal from the two. Great job there by the Lycans defense, being able to get into the backfield to prevent the artillery from getting into the end zone. We haven't called Rainstorm's name much, but great job to make sure that he couldn't get a score. Second and goal, four and 54 left. That's another handoff and another big time tackle behind the line of scrimmage. How about LA's defense standing up? Tazzy Blackwell with a big hit. Oh, Tazzy back Blackwell right there, taking after his namesake, the Tasmanian Devil, getting through <laughs> the offensive line and just getting into the backfield and getting that tackle for loss, making his third and goal from the two and a half. Third and goal. Another handoff. This one has some room. Got in. That's a touchdown. Just enough to get there. Rainstorm has it across the plane. Alamo City takes the lead. Most people don't like rainstorms, especially in Texas. But here, Alamo City fans are cheering that their storm put six points on the board. Nice drive from Alamo City. Taking advantage of the turnover, something LA was not able to do previously. Both touchdown or both quarterbacks have thrown an interception to this point 
Matt Fennick, for the second time in a row, gets to come out and add on one more tally, making it a 14-7 game. Eight plays, 42 yards, a little over two and a half off the clock. Good drive, great response, and LA's momentum is clearly gone. Oh, absolutely. And this is what Alamo City needs to be able to put the momentum on their side of the ball to be able to keep their playoff hopes alive. This will be returnable. See if it's less eventful than the last one. Out to the 15, to the 20, through the middle. That's going to keep going out to the 30, to the 33, 34, 35 yard line. How about that return? As that is in a guess with a real nice effort. The SFL alongside Jack's data will be breaking down where the playoff race stands after Saturday's games on the season 22 scenario show right here on the SFL YouTube. Three games will remain, eight scenarios will remain. What seeds, opponents, and situations will your team find themselves in? Who should you cheer for down the stretch? Stay up late with us. The show will air live at 11.45 p.m. Eastern Saturday on SFL YouTube. And Mickey, I understand you are planning on being a part of that as well. Absolutely. So if, any, if there's anything to watch, it's going to be Mickey. As well as where your team is going to sit. It's going to be out to the outside and a one-yard loss at the 34-yard line on the past the flat. Great coverage there by Ron Hoff. He was covering that receiver, keeping an eye on him. Great job getting into the backfield for the one-yard loss. And that was Jalen Wells. The fullback flat pass just didn't really have any speed to it. Second and 11. And blitz coming again. And it's going to be over the middle. Caught. And that, I believe, is Jack Flash, the tight end, who's going to bring that one in. It is first and 10 for the Lycans. Oh, uh, jumping Jack Flash right there. Just picking up the first down, but just couldn't get around Rhea right there to be able to pick up more yardage after that catch. See where L.A. can go. They've got a couple of plays, a couple of completed passes in their pocket to start this drive. They're shy of midfield right now at the 46. And that is a broken tackle to the outside. Logan Jack can't get anywhere. He's going to get taken down for a two-yard loss. And how about this consistent blitz package from Alamo City? There has been maybe one or two plays where they've only sent four defenders at Sully Richardson, everything else has been a blitz in some way, shape, or form. They gotta play aggressive here because their their playoff hopes are on the line. But Jay Mart right there, great job getting in the backfield. That's gonna be a throw and catch, a real tight window to put that one in, and it is indeed a completion. LZ Pryor, third and one on the other side. Great job there by Sully Richardson. He had pressure coming from all angles, being able to find Pryor right there, and Pryor picking up a chunk of the yards to make this third and sh very short. Under three minutes to go in this first half of play. This is a heavy set look. This looks like it should be a run, and it is. The left side trying to get there. Logan Jack is going to get taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Another big defensive play from Alamo City to stop a drive. Mickey McGuire making another big hit. you got to give credit to Rob Foraker coming in, just coming in from the outside linebacker to give Mickey oh. McGuire help. This could be big. Fourth and inches. If they make it, they're in good shape, and they do! Jalen Wells gets the Lycans moving forward. That's not even Wells. That's 44 for the Lycans. Did not expect the backup fullback Chris Massey to get that, but instead it's a first and 10. Oh, great job. Bring the backup in. Just throw the Lycans defense off their game. Being able to pick up a big first down here at the end of the first half. That's two minutes to go. This will be the last play. Actually, that yeah, this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. And it is a no-yard run as Logan Jack is stopped there. We have hit the two-minute warning in the first half of this one. 14-7, Alamo City, but LA's driving, trying to tie up the ball game. We're going to look back, Mickey, on that fourth down conversion. If L.A. comes from behind to win this, that's going to be a turning point, I think, as far as them stealing the momentum back from Alamo City. We shall see. Absolutely, Chris. Motion man across the formation. That's the tight end, I believe, Jack Flash in that spot. Looking to throw this. Sully to the outside. Dangerous ball. Nearly could have been intercepted. Instead, it's a one-yard loss. And another Mickey McGuire sighting. He's been all over the field on both sides 
as Jalen Wells brings that in. Uh, great job by who I like to refer to as the OG Mickey of the league. Just coming <laughs> in from that cornerback position, picking up that tackle for loss, making this third and long for the Lycans. Here comes the dime look on defense for Alamo City. Third and long, got to get it to the 32 for a first down. Play action. Plenty of time for Sully. Throws hard over the middle. It is incomplete. Knocked away by an Alamo City defender. And that is going to be the end of this drive, I believe, for the Lycans. So the, the, the play to give them the new set of downs on fourth down comes up all for naught as Jukin Rukin Jr. makes the play. Really? What? I'm with you, Chris. I'm actually shocked by this as well. Lycans are going for They're it. Fourth and 11. Fourth and 11. They've got five wide on the field. Did not expect this. They're going to go for this. Throw, short, incomplete. And they're going to give Alamo City fantastic field position. That is absurd. Bo Martin Jr. makes the play defensively. I don't want to say it was the wrong decision. Only because, I mean, they're 2-9. and nine. They got nothing to lose. But good on Alamo City to be ready for anything in that spot. Uh, my jaw is dropped right now, Chris. I would not think, especially in the first half and Alamo City getting the ball in the second half, that they would risk that and give Alamo City and the artillery the ball on the 43-yard line. And now Alamo City in a real good spot to maybe take a two-possession lead before the end of the first half. Looking to throw this. Plenty of time. Throw and on a screen pass. That was a slow developing screen and it nearly worked out. Brad Jones can't get free of his block. And it is a first down in 10. Or no, not quite. It'll be, oh, that's oh. a problem. Oh, Ace man. Ace Fennec is down for Alamo City. And that is not great news for uh, the artillery as they're trying to hold on to the, uh, the sniffs of the playoff spot. Oh, man, that is tough for any artillery fan base right now. Ace Finnick going down, bringing in back up Patrick Ramsey right now yep. to take over. Patrick Ramsey, the quarterback now for Alamo City. We'll see how much they use him. Maybe they can recover and get their quarterback back at the start of the second half. That's a throw well wide of the intended target towards the sideline. Cali of the intention. It's third and six. This is, gonna, this is a very huge blow to the offense. Hopefully Ace Finnick can come back in this game because I have a feeling that if Alamo City wants any chance to win this game, they're going to need Ace Finnick to helm their offense. Alamo City faithful in the chat, not happy about this current development. Makes a lot of sense. That is Cali moving left to right or right to left across the formation. Third and six. Going to give Ramsey, plenty of targets on the left side of the formation. Thrown over the middle. It's tipped and incomplete. That ball was at least on target, but a great defensive play made by, uh, by LA Nick Sorensen. The strong safety comes up to make that play. And it's just tough. Big, big play there for the artillery to get the ball back on that fourth and long for the Lycans, and they just lose their quarterback. Now you got now you're punting it away with a three and out. Yeah, and now it gives LA a little bit of time to potentially do something. This is going to bounce into the end zone, so we'll start this at the 20-yard line. First and 10 for LA. See if we can get you an update on Ace Fennec's status as soon as we possibly can because we're as curious as you are at this point. Yeah, no, this is this is a huge blow. I, and I just hope that Ace Fennec can come back in the ballgame for the artillery's sake. Here come the Lycans. They go empty in the backfield, tight end close to the formation. We'll see if Alamo City sends some extra help again. They've been pretty consistent at that pretty much throughout this game. Tight end Jack Flash moves to the right of the formation. They do send. It's a linebacker blitz over the middle. That one's caught. Plenty of room to the 45, 46-yard line. What a grab. And L.A. moving the football. They call their first timeout. Oh, jumping Jack Flash post route from the down position after he motioned in the backfield. Just a great job by him finding the open area in the secondary to be able to catch the ball and give the Lycans a little more room to be able to move down the field to get a score before the end of the first. Two to the left, two to the right. Tight end is off to the left as well. They're going to move the receiver to the left of the formation. See what L.A. has for us. 
Alamo City sending some extra. Throw right side. That one's caught. Oh, what a grab and a sneaky throw and a great bit of communication between quarterback and receiver to get it in the back pocket of the corner. Oh, Chris Lee right there. He was tangled up at the start of that play. But Sully Richardson, I guess him and him and, and Lee just have a sixth sense because he was able to turn at the right time to be able to pick up that ball. Yeah, basically took it out of the back pocket of his corner charge. That, that was fantastic work. Here come the Lycans. Not a lot of time left. Thrown over the top. That one's picked off. Well overthrown. And Alamo City gets another turnover as they go back the other way. That is Albert Begin, the strong safety. I don't know where Sully Richardson was throwing that ball, but there was nobody around. Albert Begin just stood there and caught the ball. You see here on the replay, yeah. just caught the ball, picked up the interception. It's late in the first half, 35 seconds left, but at least Alamo City has the ball. Let's see if they could do anything with it to put at least three more points on the board before they go into the half. Ramsey still out there, so nothing from Ace Fennec, at least early on in the medical tent. First and 10, 35 seconds to go in this second quarter. Hand off. Brad Jones going to be able to drag a defender for three yards, but it was first contacted at the line of scrimmage. That's a little bit of fight from him. And Alamo City not in any hurry. And with Patrick Ramsey back there, their running game is going to have to step up here to be able to keep the ball moving. Well, Ramsey, I think he's just getting the jitters out. Let's see if we get a passing situation, how he does this time around. Second and seven. This will be the last play of the first half. If they get it off, they do. Looking to throw this left side. And then it was picked off. Back the other way. How about it? With no time on the clock, couldn't quite get to the end zone, but a heck of a way to start the or end the first half. Ramsey is intercepted, and that is going to bring us into the locker room. Uh, that devil right there, Tazzy Blackwell, just coming <laughs> in from the linebacker position, the inside linebacker position, moving to the outside, getting the interception to end this first half. But great job by the Alamo City offense to make sure he couldn't get into the end zone. Yep, yeah, to work. That's a, at least a bit of uh, pursuit on that side as we end the first half of play. Heading into the locker rooms, Mickey, a, well, we've seen a little bit of everything so far. Uh, everything from a quarterback injury to a fumble on a kickoff. Break it down for me. Tell me what you saw. So uh, the Lycans started out strong. They were able to drive down the field and pick up the first touchdown of the game. Vin Kalia has been stellar so far getting right now he's at 98 yards he has caught six of eight targets so far with a 16 yards per reception but i think the biggest blow right now to the alamo city and we've been touching on it since the two minute warning is ace finnick going with him going down yeah Vin think right now he he may not get those targets because patrick ramsey just can't doesn't have the accuracy that finnick has to be able to throw him the ball Yep, and Ace Fennec right now, the leading quarterback between the two that are on there. Leading receiver right now is, in fact, Vin Calia, but that's uh, obviously with an asterisk right now because of the quarterback situation. Six catches on eight targets for 98 yards, closing in on 99 yards, I do believe, actually. And we're going to see if we can get an update on the injury situation for the, for the uh, artillery. And here is the issue. Looks like back spasms. Ryan Yosef is doubtful. Back spasms and Ace Fennec is out for the game. That is a heck of a blow. And you know those back spasms basically got to be crazy violent for him to stay out of this game, especially when his team needs a win. Oh, absolutely. I know that. I had back spasms about a year ago, and I was in the ER all night long. I just... Thanks. Oh, so I just hope that Patrick Ramsey can step up here and give the artillery a fighting chance to keep their playoff hopes alive. Well, here we go. So they get the ball back to start things out in this second half. They'll start it at the 20. And a little bit of a uh, regroup at the halftime locker room for the artillery as they have a fight to get through. And they got to hold. They either have to rely on Patrick Ramsey to score some points or their defense has to pitch a shutout in this second half for the most part to be able to give them a shot under center 
Ramsey backs it up, throws right side. It's tipped and nearly inter intercepted. That would have sent Kalia probably to the house. Real aggressive play by the corner. Nearly wound up in the hands of the Lycans. I, I can't be mad at Ramsey for that. He did a great job. He saw his open receiver. He's just not as experienced as Ace Fennec in reading the defense. He, yeah. If Ace was back there, he would have saw that cornerback and know that DeCalia wasn't the right target for that play. Or if he was, you got to touch it over the top. That too. Calia can, Calia can go get that. That's for sure. Second and 10. Ramsey is under center. Looking to throw this. Plenty of time. Thrown over the left side and incomplete. Rushed that throw a little bit, looking for Montana on the left. Third and long coming up. I know we've been talking about this since the two-minute warning, but this may be a time that the artillery just rushes the ball. Ramsey just can't find a target. He's 0 for every pass that he's thrown so far. So far, nothing doing for, the, for Ramsey. Under center. Three to the left, one to the right. It'll be a play action. Ramsey has plenty of time. Letting those routes develop, now sends it left side and incomplete. That one I don't think necessarily was on him. Kalia misread the ball out of his hands. I don't know. It looked like that Ramsey may have underthrown that ball a little bit because Vin Kalia was just wide open right there. He was, yeah. He was he was standstill, and just Ramsey couldn't get the ball to him. Now they three and out to start the second half. Yeah, that is not ideal. It'll give LA decent field position just past the midfield line unless this punt goes a mile which honestly it pretty much did out to the 36 yard line so from the 20 to the 42 net almost 60 yards that's a 58 yard punt I'm pretty sure all told good work from the special teams unit for Alamo City and that is Danny Dimes who put that one deep into LA territory now LA has to fight their way through and I got to give you credit, Chris. That was great math skills right there to figure out the yardage. <laughs> Wasn't easy. <laughs> Wasn't easy. Math was not my best subject in school. Let's just say that. <laughs> First and 10. Looking to throw this. Plenty of time. Sidearm throw. That is caught. Sully Richardson with a real nice ball for Chris Lee over the right side to the sideline. First and 10. The Lycans here have a new sense of just excitement here knowing that they have a chance that their defense doesn't have to work as hard and their offense has to step up. It looks like it already looks like the start of the drive to start this game that they've already got this great play for first and 10 from the when they started the second half. Well, here we go. I mean, LA has a chance to really play spoiler for Alamo City. Alamo City wants to leave it up to fate to see if they get in or not, but they need a win to do that. That is caught in between three artillery defenders. What a grab from Darius Inigas, and it's first and ten. First and ten. No, great grab there by Inigas. He just turned around, and just the ball was just placed right in his reach. I mean, he is 6'2", 220, and he just reached in between three. Three white jerseys there to pick up the first down. First and ten. It's only ten for 14, a buck 24, two picks on the day. I'd love to get into the end zone, if at all possible, and really make the artillery sweat. That's Inigas moving to the bottom of your screen. He's been the favorite target so far for Richardson. Left side, Logan Jack taken down. That's a five-yard gain, second and five on the other side. That at least makes it manageable. Absolutely, and... It if anything, this artillery defense is just going to have to be on their game right now. You said it at the start of the second half. They've got to pitch a shutout in the second half. And it's going to be tough that the Lycans right now are on 20-yard line. They're going to need a turnover here to pitch that shutout. Now they've gotten two so far. It's not out of the realm of possibility. That's going to be a handoff to Brennan Stahl. That's a broken tackle on the stiff arm and taken down at the 10-yard line. It is first and goal for the Lycans as they look to try to tie this game up. Uh, Brennan Skull right there just giving a huge stiff arm there to Rie and just picking up more yards first and 10 from about the 10 yard line so first and goal excuse me from just inside the 10 yard line Likens are in striking distance of that end zone again here we go big moment in this game can Alamo City hold 
Handoff, Logan Jack trying to get to the outside, has to hurdle a couple of defenders, and he's taken down at the five yard line. Second and goal from the five. And Darius Inigas right there just turned around and it was a great block by him to give his running back room to pick up five yards, six yards. It looks like it's at the four yard line here. To You're right. Just to give them a great field position here to get a score. From the four yard line, heavy set look. Looks like they're gonna flip around. The tight ends move one to the left side of the formation. No movement on defense. Offset eye look, Sully's under center, has the football, handoff. Jalen Wells gets in! That's a touchdown for the Lycans! Give the fullback some credit there. They don't get a lot of credit through this, throughout the season, but Jalen Wells there picking up a touchdown here in this big game to end the season. And just a great job finding the hole, making sure a defender misses and just getting across the goal line to put six on the board. 14-13, LA with a chance to tie this game up. Really making the artillery sweat. Snap is high, handled well, kick is up and on the way, and it is through from Zastio Black. Six plays, 59 yards after the three and out from the artillery. Now Alamo City's gonna get the ball back with a chance to retake the lead. And that drive right there took off about two minutes and 45 seconds. Hopefully on the sideline, they talk to Patrick Ramsey just to settle his nerves, be able to stay in it and be able to get this artillery down the field. That is gonna be a spin move back across out to the 26 yard line. I believe I spied a block in the back. See if that's indeed what it is. And that is what it is. It is a block in the back. They'll call it clipping. And it will bring the Alamo City return back to their own 14-yard line. And that's, that's a tough blow in the artillery for a decent return like that. Just pushing them back to the 14-yard line mm -hmm. from first and 10 from the 28. Now pushing back half the distance to the 14. They've got a long way to go to put more points on the board. Yep, first and 10, they do have some yardage to cover. Essentially got to alter the game plan a little bit, work to Ramsey's strengths, those short throws, get him to make a little bit smarter decisions here. See what they can do, or you run the ball. Give it to Brad Jones, who's sitting in the backfield right now in the, eyes, in the dotted eye spot. First and 10. Biggest drive of the ball game for Alamo City. Handoff. That is Jones. He's going to have some room right side. He's going to get himself eight yards. Second and two. Uh, great job. Great play call right there for the artillery. Being backed up close to their own end zone. Giving it just running the ball. Again, Ramsey hasn't done anything putting the ball in the air right now. He's 0 for 3. Let's keep the ball on the ground a little bit. Let him get his, uh, his gridiron legs, for lack of better terms and then just keep on getting first downs, run time off the clock, put some points on the board. Yeah, the only completion he has is to a Likens defender. This will be another handoff through the middle. That's Rain Storm who has himself a first down for his team, and they move the chains for the first time since Fennec went down. Absolutely. I was thinking the same exact thing. They got it's their first first down since the end of the second half. 6-14 left in this third quarter. They're going to run split backs here. This looks and smells like a run. And nope, it's a Ramsey pass. Thrown over the middle. That one's caught. His first completion gets him out to the 40-yard line. It's Vincalia who gets him in the scorebook. First and 10 for the artillery. Welcome to the SFL, Patrick Ramsey, on your first <laughs> completion. Um, but you couldn't throw it to a better receiver there. Vincalia coming across the middle on that post route. Put, and... Rams, he just put it in a great spot for Calia yeah. to catch that ball. We'll see what, what he can do here, but that was a yeah, great spot. The only one who was going to catch that was going to be Calia or nobody. First and 10. I formation again. Brad Jones is back there. He's going to have it on first down. Gets through the middle, and he will have eight yards, and that is pretty decent on a first down. Alamo City's drive is methodical right now, but it is in a forward-moving direction. And that's what they need to continue this throughout the game. They've got a quarter and a half left, and their playoff hopes are on the line. Here we go. Second and two. Split backs look. 
See where the artillery go with this. This smells like a run, and it is. Trying to get to the outside. Has a first down. Rainstorm moves across the formation on the off-tackle run and has a first and 10 for Alamo City, who's in positive territory. Oh, great job there. This is, a, this is a great drive so far for the artillery, losing their leader of their offense, and Patrick Ramsey just coming in and now leading them. Now they're in the other side of the field. Does a great job driving this from their own 14-yard line to start this drive. First and 10. Play action. It'll be a reverse to the outside. That is Montana with the football. Can't get any further than the line of scrimmage on the reverse. Great little trickery there, but L.A., was all over. One thing that they're doing really well, Mickey, is that they're playing more to a Patrick Ramsey friendly tempo. Oh, absolutely. They're not playing to the Ace Finnick tempo, which is very high power, quick release. Second and 11. Ramsey throws, caught, first down and more out to the 35 yard line. They're closing in on field goal range. Yayo Montana with another grab. And you can hear everybody down in Texas just going, yay -o, because that's a huge, <laughs> huge catch that they needed right now. Getting them close to field goal territory, putting points on the board. That's all they need. They just want to put points on the board right here. They've got to get this win. First and 10. 4.03 left in this third quarter of play. Alamo City knocking on the door a bit to getting some points on the board. Split backs, look. Nickel look on defense. Rolling out. Ramsey has time. Now throws over the middle. That's caught out to the 17-yard line. And that is inside the red zone for Vin Calia. Second catch of the drive. Oh, Ramsey, he has found his groove. Between these receivers and his running back, they've kept this drive going. Great rollout to the left right there, finding Calia on a post route. And he got hit immediately. You got to give Vin Calia credit for not releasing that ball and keeping possession. First and 10 inside the SFL red zone here. Three for three on this drive. Three for nine overall with an interception. But this drive is what matters at the moment. This will be Brad Jones through the middle, dragging a defender, and it's first and goal, Alamo City. Jones right there had three defenders on his back after he picked up five yards. He just kept his legs going and said, come on, take the ride with me to pick up the first down. First and goal here. You got to look for Montana down here. That's my main defensive focus. You got to look for Ziggy Ronick down here, who we haven't seen much of. Thrown short, it's picked off! Oh man, he found the defender instead! It's Mike Scott at the four yard line! Oh, Mike Scott right there. Uh, I believe that's his second interception of the game. Just, uh, just another bad read there by oh. Ramsey. That sets LA up with a golden opportunity. They can potentially take the lead and really put Alamo City in a tough way. Game is tied at the moment from the four yard line. Sully is under center. Move Iniguez from right to left across the formation into the slot. Handoff, Logan Jack gets not very far. Two yard gain. Big hit on the defensive side of the ball from Jamar. Uh, this is a golden opportunity for the artillery. As much as it is for the Lycans here getting the ball back without putting points on the board. If the artillery could get a safety here, not only is it two extra points, but they do get the ball back after that safety. Yeah, that'd be a bit of an ask, though. We'll see. This is going to be a broken tackle. Oh, they got close there. They lose a yard and another big hit by this time Rob Foraker who comes up. Logan Jack knocked to the turf, third and nine, and Alamo City's defense can possibly bail them out. Oh, and this would be great field position if they could stop them here at third and nine, but we can't say anything because the Lycans went for it on fourth and 11 at the end of the first half. They did, they did. That was a, that was a bit of a wild decision, but they lived to tell about it. Hand off, left side, that is a stop. They gain back a yard. Nothing doing for the L.A. offense. Rain Rie comes up from the free safety spot, lays the wood, and L.A. will have to punt it away from their own paint. 
Well, at least this time they are punting it away with fourth and long here. Yeah. But again, this is going to be great field position for the artillery. A bit of an awkward looking punting cam as we are basically to the right of the uprights. As this one is up and gone. This is not a great punt out to, well, I mean, it's not bad given the situation, but they're in L.A. territory at the L.A. 47-yard line on a fair catch. And here come the artillery one more time. They live to tell about it. Game still tied. Oh, absolutely. And I think, I think they really need to focus on that ground game, even though it hasn't been much in the first half. Right now, Brad Jones has almost 50 yards, but averaging four yards per carry each time he gets the ball. Got to get the ball to Jones. Just keep on picking up four yards. Yeah, why not? Throw over the middle. That one's needed. Not going to happen. Very close. Ramsey put it in the right spot. Montana could not bring that one in. And I'm sorry, Calia. And it's second and 10. And it looked the defender was a little bit early there, tackling down Calia, but there's no laundry on the field to speak of. Yeah. Not this time. Maybe something to look out for a little bit later. Minute 35 left in this third quarter. Split backs again. Ramsey under center. Looking to throw this. Throws short. That one's caught. Moving up field. And that is going to be a decent run forward. And, well, how about it? That's a, at least a first down. That is Hank Earl Troll's second catch of the ball game. It looks like the referees may have spotted it just short of the yard to gain. Oh. And it's going to be third and short, but yeah. great, great job by Troll to pick up 10 yards there. Don't be surprised to see a running, a running play right here. Yeah, it probably should be all told. Ramsey is going to hand this one off and it will be a first down and more. Brad Jones tries to break a tackle and he's dragged down to the ground near the 30 to the 28 yard line. First and 10 Alamo City as they move the chains. And Brad Jones, 5'10", 200 yards. He's not a big guy, not a really big heavyweight, but he can drag defenders for yards to pick up that extra bit. Great play call there by the artil artillery. That's a great bit of grit from him. Under center, first and 10 for Ramsey and company. 4-3 look on defense, see if LA sends some extra help. They will. Blitz coming thrown right side it's a one-on-one -on -one, and it's a catch and how about a touchdown Alamo City takes back the lead Vin Calia toward the sideline oh Vin Calia you've been the main man all night long it's time to put some points on the board just great job there congratulations Patrick Ramsey there you found that was a fantastic pass in the back pocket look at this pass just yep. finding just right around the back of the defender there and that was TJ Jack on the defense, and she just could not could not see the ball because she yeah. turned the wrong way. But great job by Kalia, keeping an eye on his quarterback, catching the ball, and getting the touchdown. TD Jack on the defense could not make the stop, and really, Vin Kalia looked like he was dribbling TD Jack without a basketball, is what happened there, and finally made the move to get past her. 21-14, as Matt Fennick will add the extra point. Four plays, 47 yards, and the artillery have a seven-point lead. Oh, absolutely. And I got to give Matt Finnick before we didn't talk about it, but on the last kickoff he had, he made a great tackle. And I've got to give my fellow kickers a little bit of credit <laughs> when they get in on a tackle. But he had a great tackle on that last kickoff return that he had. And this will be returnable from just inside the end zone. Chris Lee has some room on the outside. 30-35 to the 40. Spin move at the 39-yard line. And that is where he is taken down as he tried to get some fights for some extra yardage. Good field position for L.A. as they start this next drive. Oh, absolutely. And unfortunately, I gave the broadcaster curse there to, to Matt Fennick because he missed a tackle there on the seam as Lee <laughs> was going up. There it is. Uh, but, yeah, great field position for the Vikings. They're down by one score. They've kept in this, even though they have nothing to lose in this game. They have kept in this game since the first second from the first kickoff. So good job to the Vikings here. Likens offense on the field. Alamo City has pretty much had their way for a while with the L.A. offense. Although it's only a one-score game at the moment. Logan Jack has a few yards. Six yards to be exact. Second and four. 23 seconds left in this third quarter of play. That may be the last play of this third frame. 
Yeah, I, be I believe it, Chris, because... But the Lycans, I mean, they, we don't know. They have been doing some strange thing throughout this game, 4th and 11. Uh, now they're coming out trying to call a play before the end of the third quarter. They got one more in them before we turn the field around. Oh, maybe. We'll see. Three seconds, they do call it. This will be a Jalen Wells handoff through the middle. Breaks a tackle, gets nine, and goes no further than that. The third quarter is done. Get your fours, your all of your numbers. Unfortunately, we added a new one, 93. Billy Ray Valentine, rest in peace. It is the end of the third. Station ID. Station of the Simulation Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. Huge loss. The SFL family, Billy Ray Valentine of the Atlanta Swarm. Definitely uh, shout-outs, thoughts, condolences to the Swarm family and the Stover family. Uh, Lost a good one, no doubt about that. Third and one, L.A. trying to move the chains on a big third down. That's going to be through the left side, trying to get their first down and more. And L.A. is going to move those chains. Logan Jack one more time. It's first down. Oh, Logan Jack right there. Looked like he was dead to rights in the backfield there, but he just was able to juke around the defender to pick up two yards to get a first down here to keep the drive alive. First and 10. Seven point lead for Alamo City, but LA is moving the football. Left side, there's a run and a big hit. Jack, I'm sorry, that's Brennan Stahl who goes down real quick. Nice work from Alamo City's defense, second and eight. And it was Grant Williams on the ground that uh, Brennan Stoll had to jump over to be able to get there. And that's what caused it to only be a two-yard gain there. Yeah, let Bogey Barr come in and make the hit was, uh, was the reason for that. That's going to be through the middle for Logan Jack, trying to break a tackle and gets a couple. No further than that. Creates a big third and seven for L.A. And Alamo City can get themselves right back on the field as far as offense goes if they get a stop here. And you got to give the front four of the defensive line there of Alamo City real credit because they kept that line busy to give their free safeties and their secondary a chance to come up and stop that rushing play. Third and seven. See what L.A. has. Don't think it's going to be against their nature to possibly go for it on fourth down if it gets to that at this point. Oh, pressure coming. Throw right side. And the pressure in the face of Sully Richardson caused the hurried throw Nothing doing. Incomplete fourth down. And we'll see what they decide. Oh, Tina begin was in that backfield in the face of Sully Richardson. They're going to punt. We're, oh, they are going to punt. So no fourth and surprises here right now, Chris. <laughs> At least not right now. Fourth and seven. L.A. going to try to pin Alamo City deep in a seven-point ball game. Fair catch, no fair catch. Out to the 15-yard line is where he will be catching that football and taken down. Here comes the artillery offense, led by Patrick Ramsey. Has a touchdown and two interceptions in this ball game. Another big moment for LA's defense to see if they can make the stop. Or does Alamo City stretch it to a two-possession lead? I want to see Alamo City here really run the ball, take some time off this clock. They yeah. haven't scored much since Finnick went down. So I want to see the balls in, the ball in the hands of their running backs. Jones in the backfield. Ramsey will throw. Backing up. Thrown short. Trying to break a tackle. Does. Jones has some room to run. Out to the 30. Cuts back inside. Taken down there. First and 10. Good decision by Ramsey to check it down. Putting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. And Ramsey right there, he had all the time in the world to look down the field to find somebody, but no open receivers. As you said, Chris, great check out there. And Brad Jones just made something out of possibly nothing. And he picked up, and he's already to the 31-yard line. First and 10. 8.07 to go in this football game. Ramsey backs it up, looks, throws right side. That's a dangerous ball, but it's caught in between two Lycans who were hungry for that football. Ziggy Ronick sighting his first grab. 
Oh, Ziggy Ronick, what a way to just keep your eye on the ball. You're right, Chris. That was a very dangerous throw, and it was not even on target. He had to stretch out behind him to be able to catch the ball, but just a great job by him to have the wherewithal to be able to catch the ball, pick up the first down, keep this drive alive, and the clock going. 7-40 and 40 left in this fourth quarter in what essentially is a playoff game for Alamo City. They have a seven-point lead. Under center, that'll be a draw play. Off tackle, handoff. Brad Jones has some room, has a lot of room. Plenty of green in front of him, and he's chased down from behind at the 25-yard line. What a tackle. That saved a touchdown. Oh, absolutely. Brad Jones just saw green in front of him. And this was a delayed draw counter here. And Brad Jones got stuck a little bit behind the line, but just was able to see the holes right there. And if it wasn't for the defender right there, Devontae Moore. Devontae Moore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would have been, that would have been another six points for the artillery. Yeah, big time speed from Devontae Moore, able to catch Brad Jones before he is gone. First and 10 for Alamo City, but they are well within striking distance at this point. This will be a handoff. Oh, what a big time throwdown. Rainstorm to the sideline. First and goal said, get off me to the defender and gets down to the five. Oh, Rainstorm just put his hand in the face mask and said, see the hand? Now you see me going right past you. He picks up 20 yards here, really keeping artillery in this game. It's going to be first and goal from the five yard line by that huge run by Rainstorm. Here comes Alamo City. They can go up two scores. First and goal. What a statement this would be if they're able to do it. Six and 47 left in this fourth quarter. LA trying to hold, handoff through the middle and into the end zone. Brad Jones, one more time, artillery touchdown. Brad Jones just getting the ball, doing what he does best, running it through the line, finding the hole, putting six points on the board, putting the artillery up by two touchdowns. And what a hole that was by the line. You could fit a Mack truck through that. What a drive by Alamo City. I don't think you can get much better than that. Five plays, 85 yards, a four-yard rushing touchdown, and the extra point is up and through with no issues from Matt Fennick. 28-14, Alamo City not going down without a fight. and said maybe they're not going down at all with 6.39 left in this fourth quarter. No, and again, they need this win here to just have the potential to get into the playoffs. It's not a guarantee with a win for Alamo City, but this keeps their chances alive. It does. In big moments. This will be a return for Chris Lee. Out to the 20, the 25. will juke left at the 26-yard line. He'll get taken down there. Nothing doing. And actually, that was Inigas on the return either way. First and 10 for L.A. Now comes time for them to score or basically die trying. Yeah, this is the chance. The Lycans really need to put points on the board here. And a field goal is not going to help them. They really need to get into the end zone, put six, potential seven onto the board to really stay in this game. We still got a half of a quarter of football left. So let's see if they can get down the field quickly. They haven't done that much this game yet. Alamo City basically needs a win over L.A. and then an animal sacrifice, which might actually be a lichen at this point, to be able to get into the playoffs. See if they can do just that. They're gonna, they would be at 6-6 six and six if this result holds. That's a blitz. Not going to happen. Toss to the outside. Goes nowhere. Big time hit. One yard gain only. Ron Huff there on the big time hit, as you mentioned. Great job just keeping them short yardage, only picking up one on that play. But again, the big thing for Alamo City is that clock rolling. 28-14. Alamo City clinging. That's going to be a run and not much to it. So LA looks like they want to run the ball in the most interesting times to run the ball when they're down two scores of six minutes left. Now they have an obvious patching situation, third and six. And Logan Jack has been their main offensive weapon with 76 yards, picking up four and a half per carry. I don't see why they don't use him here. See if they go to him out of the flat. Maybe they go downfield. 
So it does go downfield, deep over the middle, and it is incomplete. Alamo City's defense has done exactly what we have said they needed to do for the most part. They've played lights out with the exception of the one score given up. Oh, absolutely. Now let's just see. With five and a half left, I thought they may go for it here, but no, they decided to punt the ball away. They're going to go for it under two minutes left in the second quarter, but they don't hear. Interesting decision-making from L.A., and they're going to give Alamo City the football with a chance really to put this game away as this is going to be a return that stays on his feet out to the 38-yard line. Not much more to it than that. And first and 10 for Alamo City. Now, this is interesting for Alamo City because they really don't need a touchdown here. They just need to get into field yeah. goal range and let Matt Finnick just put three more points on the board. And it makes it a three-score game that the Lycans would have to come back from with 534 left in the game. So they can really play, we mentioned it earlier in this half, very methodical running time off the clock and just get to the 30, 25-yard line and let Matt Fanick put three, uh, three points on the board. Yeah, really no reason to play super aggressive here. Kenny Hendricks, by the way, on that return for Alamo City. First and 10. It'll be a handoff. Brad Jones, who's had a whale of a game so far. Second and four as they get six more yards for the halfback. Two touchdowns, 97 yards approximately for Brad Jones so far on just 16 attempts. That's good for 6.1 per carry right now, literally carrying the load for the artillery. And he's got 6.1 yards per carry so far this game. Second and four. Through the middle. Rain Storm gets an, ends up one short of the first down. Five minutes and ticking on this clock. And the artillery are doing exactly what I said. Keep this clock rolling, relying on their running game. They don't have to be, you said it, not super aggressive. They just have to get into field goal range. Third and one for the artillery. And off again. First down and more. Brad Jones has it inside of L.A. territory again. As it's first and ten, the clock continues to tick, tick, tick away. And Brad Jones here, I said it before, he's averaging over six yards per carry. Why not give it to him on third and, third and one? Uh, with the exception of the 29-yard rush that he had earlier in the game, he just surpassed the century mark getting 105 yards on the game. He's been good. He's been darn good this game for Alamo City at a time they desperately needed him. First and ten. Got a couple of receptions, too. Ramsey under center. I would imagine this should be another run. And it will be. Toss play left side. Rainstorm going to get caught behind a blocker. It is second and nine. The wild card round of season 22 kicks off another SFL postseason with doubleheaders Saturday and Sunday, April 20th and 21st, starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss any action in the SFL playoffs right here on SFL YouTube. Who will make an impact when it matters the most? Alamo City trying to punch their ticket to those playoffs. That's going to be through the middle. Not much to it from there. Another hit, third and seven. L.A. can get the defense off the field, potentially with a stop here. And it's been a tough situation for Alamo City. They are on the other side of the field, but they just are not in field goal range. And Pat Ramsey hasn't done much. He's less than 50% completion right now, and this is definitely a passing situation. Well, here we go. This will be his first pass attempt likely of this drive in a spot where Alamo City can really bleed down the clock to probably the two-minute warning if he makes it. Put a man in motion to the right side of the formation. Two on the play clock, one, and they are going to take the delay of game. That's a honestly not a terrible play. If they're not sure, just take it. And it gives a little bit more room for the punter to work and probably bring the um, probably bring the uh, the trap as they try to get it towards the sideline. No, absolutely. I'm a, I agree with you there. Just push it back a little bit. I don't know about doing it on third down, maybe yeah. fourth down, but now you're just giving – they're probably going to run the ball here to be, make sure to take more time off the clock. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking too. Just decided to do it, I think, as, as, the, uh, as the formations were coming up. 12 on the play clock here. Third and 12. 
they will run the ball, as you alluded to, right at the midfield stripe. So they'll kick it from there and give LA back the football, but they're gonna not they're not gonna get this football until there's about two and teens left on this clock. This is gonna be a huge punt here for Danny Dimes. Now, granted, the Lycans trying to get two scores in just yeah. two minutes is gonna be very difficult. But we've seen it happen. We've definitely seen it happen. But Danny Dimes is a great punter. He could put this ball inside the five yard line. He could put this ball inside of a trash can at the pylon from here if he really needed to. Eight seconds left. Gonna bring it down as much as he can. Three seconds, two, they do snap the ball. Kick is gonna be to the left-hand side. And a very good punt gets down to the eight yard line, bounces into the end zone. So can't keep it out of the end zone. And that will start LA at the 20 yard line, but ultimately it may not matter. 209 left in this fourth quarter. And I'll tell you, how about this Alamo City offense with a two score lead and their quarterback going down at the end of the first half? The fact that that all happened and they still are in the position they're in to potentially get a win says a lot about the perseverance of this team. Oh, absolutely. Plus, you have to give the the Alamo City defense credit only uh, holding L.A. to one more score after that happened. That's going to be over the middle, and Sully can't find the target. Second and 10, but it does stop the clock. You're right. It, 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 the defense had a lot to do with that, forcing turnovers off of Sully, getting the three and outs stopping Richardson and company from moving down the field with any sort of consistency in the second half. And especially that, that three and out that LA had on their own five yard line. That was a big moment in this football game and Alamo city held, held firm. Oh, absolutely. 207 left solely with nobody in the backfield thrown short. That's caught, but short of the first down line, they're going to run no huddle, but it doesn't matter. Two minute warning is upon us. It's a two-score game in LA, 28-14, as the artillery look to wrap things up on the road. Huge shout out to Michaela Forker and Zach Holdorf in the stats truck with us. Cameron Irvine on the buttons and my partner in crime, Mickey Melillo, on the broadcast with me. And LA is going to challenge the spot. I'm not entirely sure why, but it does give us an opportunity to look at the play retroactively brought to you by Retro. Yeah, I'm not sure why they want to look at the spot of the ball, maybe just get the extra yard here, but it's not going to make any impact. They're not going to get the first down here. The only thing they're going to do is get a little closer to the uh, the line to gain. That's definitely not a first down there. I mean, at the, at the worst part of that, I guess, is that worst case for them is it doesn't change. They don't get the first down, but they do make it a closer fourth down, which I think is what they may try to do here. Okay. So they do overturn the call. So LA is not charged a timeout. So they do get it a little bit. Oh, they don't get it a little bit closer. It's a little bit farther away. How oh. about that decision? Third and one instead of third and inches. Well, that just bit them in a the foot down, didn't it? <laughs> All right, so if they don't get anything here, he has a fourth and one. Let's see what they do. That's a throw over the top, and it's caught out to the 48-yard line. First and 10, timeout taken by the Lycans. And it's, this is the time where the Lycans are going to try to preserve as much clock as possible. They've got two minutes left. They need two scores. If they're able to get into the end zone, and they have to get into the end zone, three points is not going to help them. You know there's an onside kick coming right after it. Yeah, this is not uh, done, but uh, they're warming up out in the, uh, the church choir over there. Split the defensive line. Two on one side, two on the other. See if Alamo City continues to send extra heat at the quarterback, and they do. Over the middle. That is caught somehow. How in the world did that get through the maze of arms and legs to get into the hands of the receiver? L.A. calls another timeout. Chris, we've seen so many great plays by the quarterbacks and even more impressive plays by the receivers. I'm sitting here thinking the same thing. There were three white jerseys all around that receiver, but Sully Richardson put it into the perfect spot that only his receiver could get it. Yeah, that makes six arms that that ball has to travel through, not to mention into the arms of the receiver. 
That's crazy. Three to the right, one to the left. Sully looking to find something tipped and incomplete. Second and 10, but the clock stops at a minute 47. Jack Flash, the intended target. Great job there. And that was Mickey McGuire on coverage there, making sure that the jumping Jack Flash could not keep control of the ball. Maybe he's not jumping Jack Flash. Maybe he's Cheddar Jack Flash. Oh, that's a Damn. good one. I got to remember yeah. that. All right, maybe he's a little spicy. He's Pepper Jack Flash. Oh, or Monterey Jack. Mm, no, I think Pepper Jack Flash works. Okay. That, that's my favorite. Second and ten. <laughs> <laughs> Three to the left, one to the right. Sully throws left side and incomplete third and ten. Oh, man. It, it, just a really bad throw there by Sully. I can't say anything else. I, I try to be as articulate as possible, but just a bad throw there by Sully Richardson, just not finding his receiver, uh, and the receiver was open there, too. Third and ten. Minute 44 left. LA trying to get something done. Looking to throw this. Throw short, little quick hitch over the middle, and that is going to end up being fourth down. L.A. in a spot where they're likely going to go for this just to keep their hands on the football, and this very well could be the ball game if, LA, if Alamo City gets a stop. Yes, but the L.A. has shocked us. I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to punt the ball here. Here we go. Fourth and five, play action, Sully in trouble, he's taken down, and instead of out with a roar, they go out with a whimper, first and 10, Alamo City. Oh, my main fellow, Stephen Mellows the second, coming in with a huge sack there, bringing Richardson down to get the ball back. Big sack there by the artillery. Wow. Minute 35 to go, Alamo City with victory formation. Patrick Ramsey came in at the start of this second half, really the end of the first half, and albeit with some bumps in the road, has led the Alamo City artillery to a win in week 14. This is amazing. Ace Finnick, a top 10 quarterback in the league goes down two minutes left in the first half you have a non-contracted backup come in and just leads the team to two more scores and being able to keep the playoff hopes alive from this team from texas second and 11 and this is I mean, that, that that's a statement made by alamo city where if they are to get in they can persevere i don't think there's any doubt about that they're a tough out and they come through and beat L.A., an L.A. team that's been playing much better as of late. And they come into L.A.'s house. They beat them in front of their home fans. And now it's up to fate as to whether or not they're going to get in at 6-6. Six and six. 40 seconds left. This should be the second to last snap, I believe. But the, the, the biggest thing to take away from this is there are uh, there is a spot, at least one spot, where a 6-6 six and six team can get into the playoffs more on that in the scenario show tomorrow night, but I mean, they've done their job at this point and gotten the win that they needed. Now it's up to everyone around them to let the dominoes fall in their favor. 13 seconds left, and that is going to do it. So LA comes through two and 10 this season, could not quite get on a roll fast enough to be able to make a run at the division and so they'll have some things to look at in the offseason but at least they have positive notes moving forward their second half was much better than their first alamo city gets the win though mickey and they go to six and six let's talk about this game in detail and this again it was a statement by alamo city oh absolutely and you look at the the game stats here, I mean, 450 total yards against 314. This wasn't a, a not, you know, a game that didn't have a lot of excitement in it. But if I had to give somebody a game ball, it's going to be shocking. As much as Vin Calia, 160 yards on nine receptions, I'm going to give it to Brad Jones. Yeah. He, he ran just rushing yards, probably about 75 yards in that second half after Ace Finnick went down. 
and I have to give, if I'm going to give the, the kicking it with Mickey game ball, I'm giving it to Brad <laughs> Jones for really stepping up and taking his offense and putting it on his back to get them their win here. Yeah, he did. I mean, Rainstorm also contributed to that, but Brad Jones really did well. I am going to give the game ball to uh, Vin Callier. He really stepped up when Patrick Ramsey needed him, made some tough catches on some balls that may not have been ideal. But uh, Ramsey did a heck of a job adjusting, as did Kalia, to his new battery mate. And uh, that is where that ends up. So Alamo City, 28-14 over the LA Lycans. That is it from Los Angeles. For more, log on to simulationfl.net. We've got more coming tomorrow. Just a few games left in the regular season.